everybody, this is Jessica Rideau here at Reverb, and today we are playing a game called Horseplay, where I challenge another drummer to a game of horse and learn a little bit about them along the way. Today we are lucky to have a legendary thrash metal drummer here with the band Anthrax, Charlie Benante. Uh, but before we start talking to Charlie and get into it, I'm gonna tell you guys the rules. So how this is gonna work is we will have a mystery producer sending us mystery prompts, and we're just gonna have to do our best uh, to play whatever they throw at us today. So without further ado, hello Charlie, how are you? What have you been up to? Hi, how are you? I've Great. been up to a lot. <laughs> yeah, tell um, us about it. Well, during last year, I managed to put a, uh, a record together, which wasn't in, I wasn't intending on putting a record together. It just happened that way. Started doing these quarantine type of jams with some friends, and it just snowballed into something. Just because people kept asking me about putting it out, putting it out on, uh, you know, CD, vinyl, whatever, I decided to do it. So uh, it came out May 14th, and it's called Silver Linings. It's called Silver Linings because I found silver linings in a year of a very dark time. Yeah, yeah well, that's amazing. Okay, awesome. Do you have anything else coming up? Anthrax just put out a graphic novel. Uh, we got in uh, contact with Z2 Comics about doing a graphic novel based on our Among the Living record. And we incorporated a bunch of great artists and some great writers like Rob Zombie, uh, Gerard and Mikey Way from My Chemical Romance, uh, Corey, Corey Taylor from Slipknot. And they each took a song from our record and wrote a story around it. So Scott and myself, Scott wrote the, the story for the song I Am The Law and I ended up doing the cover for it. So I got to do my art and I got to do music throughout this whole year. Amazing, awesome. Well, yeah, everybody check out uh, Charlie's album Silver Linings and stay tuned for everything else you have coming up. That sounds amazing. Okay, well, uh, if you guys are, are ready for it, I guess we could get into our, our first uh, prompt and the letter H, which will now be handed to me by the <laughs> mystery producer. Okay, H, um, it's an <laughs> awesome start. It's 1978, you've been invited to sit in for a blank check sold out gig, but you find out it's at Studio 54. If the people don't dance, you don't get your millions. What beat do you kick off to disco for your dinner? <laughs> so what beat do you kick off to disco for your dinner? Would it make you feel better or worse if I went first? Cause I'm not sure I have a preference. <laughs> you want me to you start can, it off? I first. mean, this is the first touch of the day, by the way. So <laughs> a little rusty. All right, I mean. If that doesn't get the people dancing, I don't know what will. <laughs> okay, like Charlie. That. All right, well, thank you. I'm uh, ready to, to hear what you got. So now, do I duplicate that or do my own? That's how I'm getting people to disco for my dinner. It might be different for you. <laughs> So, okay, so if I was there and I was the drummer and I took a look at the people that were there, like I look at them and I'm like, all right, so I'd probably go. Uh... Yeah, I'd say that's going to get the people going. <laughs> Because it, it, it kind of has a funky kind of groove to it, but yet it has that disco hi-hat. Oh, yeah. But yours was way more upbeat, so everybody may go, yeah, yeah, bring it up, bring it up. <laughs> Listen, I think that you did great. I think that's going to be a, a million-dollar blank check beat. <laughs> All right. So uh, I guess that's uh, leading us to our first question. Okay, so since we're talking about beats, I think I want to start with this one. Um, you've written a lot of drum parts. You know, you've, you've got tons of experience writing. Of all of the songs you've written drum parts for, um, which part were you like the most proud of or most excited about? I would probably say there's two songs that immediately come to mind. The first one would be the song called Indians, where it starts with a very, uh, as of right now, it's a very kind of iconic 
start to his song. When we play live, all I have to do is just start to go into that and then you get a big roar from it. So uh, it's it's immediately like recognizable, you know? So that would be one. And then uh, on one of our records, we had a song called Nobody Knows Anything where the song was written around the drum pattern. Um, and in the song, there's like this drum break where I kind of go off on like a bunch of triplets. Uh, so those two songs would be the two songs that I would pick. Awesome. I think I actually caught, I saw a live performance of Indians that was really cool. And that, that intro was definitely a crowd pleaser. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, well, I guess that's going to lead us to O, <laughs> which from what I can see on this paper is shorter than H. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, we are going to impress the local VFW crowd with our finest stick trick. Okay, our finest stick trick. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll take the start on this one again. I don't know. That's a tough one because, I mean, we got the solid flip. And by solid flip, it's anything but solid as I do it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, or if I can get it to stop. Oh. <laughs> nope, it's not going to happen. Hey, all right. There it is. There's mine. <laughs> you, you won. You won I, make th <laughs> I make things levitate. It's uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I think, uh, yeah, let's see it. I don't have, all I have is the, you know, that. Yeah. That's a, that's as much as I could do. If I had a higher ceiling, I could. Oh, do you do the thing where you pop up. it off? Yeah, that's but I can't can't do it here. So let's just imagine that I did. That. <laughs> okay, we're imagining it. It's amazing. Time for our next question. Okay, so you've played with the H E band. Yes. Yes. And I also have played with the HE band. I had an amazing experience. I'm assuming you did too, because they're wonderful people. But my question for you is what was that experience like compared to what you're used to? Um, you know, like you usually are playing in front of large crowds and then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're in a much different setting and it's a little bit different as far as like what your job is and, and how you are going to play your instrument. And I'm wondering what, what was that like for you? I, uh, it's funny you said that because I'm actually repeating it uh, this July 15th, no, July 12th. I start a week with, uh, with them again on the Seth Meyers show. Um, All right. But, but this time it's kind of phoned in. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually going to be there. But the first time I did it, I was there at 30 Rock. And th that whole week was so exciting because we got to, you know, show up at like noon, talk, eat lunch and then work out some song ideas. And that was the most creative and fun time I had uh, doing a TV show. The only thing that I would say that was kind of tricky is before the break is gonna come up, they feed you the song that you're gonna play because if you forget the song, then you're screwed, but they feed you a little <laughs> bit yeah. of it. And it's like, oh yeah, there it is, that's the song. And then it's like, got to give like 30 seconds and then the producer you have to keep an eye on him because he's like doing this like wrap it up you know so that's when you know to take it down and give the band four to get out so i loved it i loved every part of that it was just so much fun to me it's so different from, um, you know, like playing a show or something where you know exactly you've been playing the same set every night, you know exactly what's coming. Everything's a little bit different, right? And timing those entrances and the exits and everything. And the other thing I noticed uh, from doing TV shows is like they keep the studio like so cold. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's freezing. So it's like you. It's like, okay, let's go, I wanna play because I'm freezing. So uh, that's one thing, even on like, we've done uh, Leno, we've done uh, Jimmy Fallon, and it's always freezing. Yeah. I, don't I, I don't know why they like it that time. Maybe keep the audience, keep the audience on their toes. Yeah, you know, when they've got the cameras up on your face, I guess it's to help us not be anxious and sweating like crazy. And <laughs> that's true. But, uh, 
Um, great. Okay. Well, I guess that leads us to our next prompt. Let's see what it is. Mystery producer, thank you very much. R is play a beat of your choice with way too many fills. <laughs> with way too many fills? Yeah, these, are, these get you thinking. <laughs> well, you guys. Also, I don't, I don't uh, really play double kick, um, but I feel like this may be the time to start. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like. Okay, I'm gonna pause and say, that's not as, that's not as rough as I thought it would be or sounding for me. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, yeah, okay, maybe just like a straight up. This is a tough one. I can't, it's, it's very, I'm having a hard time thinking on the spot. Charlie, you automatically win this round. I give it to you, but go ahead and, and show us your, your stuff. <laughs> so wait, so play a beat with way too many fills in it. So that's that hard. seems like a normal, that seems like a normal Anthrax song to me. <laughs> play it, play a normal Anthrax song. Yeah, I think we should just edit my turn out and just start and end there for that segment. Okay, excellent. That was very good. You win, R. Um, okay, next question. Um, what style of drumming intrigues you the most other than thrash metal? Like, have you ever wanted to maybe like play another style or in another kind of band? Or like, what, what interests you beyond um, you know, your thrash metal drumming? Uh, there's two types. I really like uh, the, the funk drummers, like the James Brown, um, Jabo Starks, and Clyde Stubberfield. I love how they played with James Brown. They just laid it down, and then when when it came time for James to give them a little a little bit, they took it and they took it and they just did it so sweet. Um, so there's those type of drummers, and I like a lot of progressive rock drummers, like you know. Uh, I have to say Neil Peart, you know, his drumming in Rush, Rush was uh, very inspiring. So those type of drummers are, are ones that I, I listen to a lot. Yeah, great answer. Um, okay, <laughs> our next prompt, uh, what are we on, S here? S. Okay, <laughs> so play the drum solo break of the Beatles, The End, but if the Beatles were a thrash or punk band. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna do my best here. <laughs> um, yeah, I like the punk. That's punky, right? I think, like, sure. Uh, okay, so I'll let you have the, the thrash metal version of it. <laughs> so I have to, so, so, so. Yeah, so I have to Yep. Yep. That's it. And again, and that's inspiring. That's inspiring. To, 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 that question is really good. All now right. It's got well, me thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could do a whole remake of that song, a thrash metal uh, remake of, of the end. I'm sure people would love it. And again, that round goes to Charlie. So um, I guess that leads us to another question. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your gear and, uh, you know, what kind of gear you prefer? I, I noticed you have um, a little bit of a, a larger kit. Like, I usually play with, like, a pretty stripped set. Um, you have, like, a lot of cymbals and stuff. And have you always played a larger set, or was that something that happened over time? 
It's like when I, when I first joined the band, um, I wanted to expand the kit that I was playing uh, because I wanted more colors. You know, yeah. uh, I've always I've always used Piesty cymbals. Uh, I always thought Piesty cymbals were way ahead of all the other cymbals. They just have this sound that you just cannot duplicate. I play Tama drums because I love Tama drums and I think they make some of the greatest hardware, some of the best drums. So, um, and you know, for me, I stay loyal. I really don't change. If I love it, then I stay with it. Uh, yeah. Vic, Fur Vic Furth sticks, Evans heads, you know, can't go wrong. But yeah, once the band started to kind of grow more and more, I think that's when my kit started to grow even bigger. Um, and in like the hard rock, heavy metal world, it just looks, awesome when you just have a lot you know what i mean yeah <laughs> so it, it, you know it's just like so that's that that was another aspect of it and like well when i referenced neil neil Peart before from rush uh i i would always look at his kit and every tour he would it would grow bigger and bigger you know but um and then at a certain time i took some things away and now the kit that i have has been basically the same for for quite a bit now Okay. Today, I'm just playing a more stripped-down kit. Okay, awesome. Great. All right. Does that lead us to, uh, are we on E now? <laughs> okay, thank you, mystery producer. For E, we have to do our best John Bonham impression. So Awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'll kick this off. <laughs> um... okay about it <laughs> i feel okay about it john bottom has some of those iconic drum parts that you know uh he's sampled a lot too you know on the levy break yeah love that i love um there's a song they had called the crunge and it has this funky it's, it's so awesome yeah, um, he's got a lot of there's parts. There's good times, bad times. Oh, does he have a cowbell? So awesome. Although he doesn't play with this, though, so. <laughs> that sounds weird in a Zeppelin song. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Gosh, I'm so, I'm so like, that part is so cool. I love that, the, oh, that, that's so yeah. cool. All right, everybody, that's it for today. Charlie, thank you so much for hanging with us and playing this game of horse. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us uh, before we take off? Your band has a live stream coming up. Uh, do you want to share some information about that? Oh yeah, the Anthrax live stream, that's uh, on July 16th. You could go to anthraxlive.com and check it out and we're excited about that we're also excited about hitting the road again uh in july we have our first show july 15th looks like things are progressing in a positive way and can't wait to see everybody excellent all right everybody thank you again for joining us keep up with all charlie is doing and we're gonna have charlie play us out take it away charlie <laughs>